Good afternoon. Welcome to the April 17, 2024 formal meeting of the Phoenix City Council. We'll begin with an invocation and welcome Rabbi Levertov. Almighty God, look favorably upon the elected officials of the city of Phoenix. Bless these individuals elected by the people in whom faith and confidence have been placed to legislate laws to make decisions that will affect the lives of the citizens of our great city. Let them recognize that this is not only a great honor and civic responsibility, but also a holy endeavor. The Jewish tradition tells of the seven universal laws given to mankind by God through Noah, one of which instructs us to create a peaceful and moral society governed by law. Almighty God, grant that those assembled here be aware of your presence in their holy, godly mission as they labor to enact just laws. This Friday, our nation will celebrate Education and Sharing Day USA, an annual observance recognized by our president, Congress, and many states, including our own, dedicated to the promotion of education and the values of sharing and giving back to the community. It honors the legacy and teachings of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. He stressed, Education is not only the acquisition of knowledge, but also the development of character and the cultivation of a sense of responsibility towards others through acts of kindness, charity, and generosity. As we face rising levels of hatred, anti-Semitism, acts of terror around the world, and as we mark 193 days of captivity of 133 innocent civilians, including six Americans, let us do our part to make this world better by increasing in our acts of goodness and kindness. Let us reach out to one person we would not otherwise have spoken to, whether that means across the aisle or just across a desk. Let us gain inspiration from the words of Moses spoken to the Jewish nation as they entered the land of Israel. You will have done what is incumbent upon you, so I will do what is incumbent upon me, says God. Almighty God, please guide our council members and city leaders through this very difficult time. Guide them in, de in their deliberations so that they may govern with wisdom, justice, ethics, morals, grace, and compassion. May they have the courage to be a beacon of light bringing honor to your name and your blessing to humankind and all of the people of the city of Phoenix. And finally, in order to do their own work efficiently and well, please heal their bodies, soothe their minds, and bring peace to their families so they can give their full attention to their sacred work. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Please remain standing. Councilwoman Pastor will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Councilwoman. I'll now call to the, me the meeting to order. Will the clerk call the roll? Councilman Galindo Elvira. Here. Councilwoman Guardado. Here. Councilwoman Hodge Washington. Here. Councilwoman O'Brien. Here. Councilwoman Pastor. Here. Councilman Robinson. Councilman Waring. Here. Vice Mayor Stark. Here. Mayor Gallego. Here. This is the first public meeting for Councilman, Councilman Galindo Elvira, so let's give him a welcome. Thank you, Mayor. We are glad to have you. Next, we'll introduce our interpreter. We have Mario Barajas and Elsie Duarte with us today. Mario, would you introduce your team? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Hello, my name is Mario Barajas, and I'm going to be serving as uh, an interpreter along with my colleague, Elsie Duarte. I'll now introduce ourselves to our Spanish-speaking audience. Buenas tardes. Yo soy Mario Barajas. Voy a estar sirviendo como intérprete junto con mi colega, Elsie Duarte. Quisiéramos avisarles de, que, de antemano de que si es que van a dar un comentario público, se les pide, por favor, si acaso pueden uh, hacer pausas después de cada una o dos oraciones. Al igual, pedimos de que evite distracciones de fondo y también hablar claramente y lentamente. Se les agradeceríamos mucho. De esa manera, podemos uh, interpretarles de la mejor manera posible. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mario. Would the city clerk please read the 24-hour paragraph? The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinance number G7246 through 7248, S50752 through 50781, and resolutions 22183 and 22191 through 22194. Thank you. Would the city attorney please explain the role of public comment? Yes, thank you, Mayor. 
Members of the public may speak for up to two minutes to comment on agenda items. Comments must be related to the agenda item and the action being considered by the council. General comments that go beyond the scope of the agenda item must be made in the citizen comment session at the end of the agenda. City Council and staff cannot discuss or comment on matters related to pending investigations, claims, or litigation. Additionally, any member of the public who appears before Council in their capacity as a lobbyist must, as required by Phoenix City Code, disclose this fact before addressing Council. The City Code requires speakers to present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. Profane language, threats, or personal attacks on members of the public, Council members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules will lose the opportunity to continue to speak. Thank you so much. We first begin with the meeting minutes. Vice Mayor, do you have a motion on item one? Move to approve item one. Second. Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Aye. Passes unanimously. Councilwoman Pastor, do you have a motion on item two? Move to uh, move. Meeting minutes on, uh, I think it's August 15th, 2021. September, sorry. <laughs> September. Second. We have a motion to second comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? <laughs> Passes unanimously. Councilman Waring, do you have a motion on item three? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. I move approval of the minutes uh, for October 6th, 2021. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed aye. nay? Passes unanimously. Councilwoman Hodge Washington, do you have a motion on item four? Yes, Mayor, I move for the approval of the February 7, 2024 minutes. Second. A motion and a second, any comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Passes unanimously. Thank you all for reviewing the minutes. Item five is boards and commissions. Vice Mayor, do you have a motion? Yes, I move to approve Mayor and City Council Boards and Commission nominations. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Aye. We will now, passes unanimously, we will now swear in the great group of individuals who have agreed to serve our city. Please raise your right hand. I state your name. Amanda McGowan. Michael Huber. Mark Beeler. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of the State of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the State of Arizona. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And defend them against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that, I will faithfully and impartially and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the office of Vision Zero Community Advisory Committee, Deer Valley Village Planning Commission, South Mountain Village Planning Commission. According to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. We are so honored to have you serve our city. If you could go behind the council members, would love to thank you. Welcome to our new commissioners. Uh, so many of us here got our start with the city's boards and commissions, and it's great to have you helping us. Uh, we next go to the liquor license portion of our agenda. The city of Phoenix provides an advisory role to the state of Arizona. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Yes, I move to approve items six through 22. Second. Motion and second, any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Passes unanimously. City Clerk, are we ready for ordinances, resolutions, new business, planning, and zoning? Yes, Mayor. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Yes. I move to approve items 23 through 66, except the following. Items 46, 51, 
52, and 66, noting that item 40 is withdrawn. And can the clerk confirm if there are any other items that should be excluded for in-person public comment? Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the, of the council, no, there are no other items to exclude. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Galindo Elvira? Yes. Guardado? Yes. Hodge Washington? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Robinson? Waring? Yes. Stark? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-0. Item 46 is next. Will the city clerk please read the title? Item 46 is for ordinance G7247, an ordinance amending Phoenix City Code Chapter 36, Article 11, Section 36-157.3, to add Area 31 to the Residential Parking Permit Ordinance. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? I move uh, to approve Item 46. We have a motion and a second. Comments? Roll call. Galindo Elvira? Yes. Guardado? Yes. Hodge Washington? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Waring? Yes. Stark? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-0. Vice Mayor, item 51. Thank you. I move to approve item 51. Second. I'll turn to the Vice Mayor for comments. She's been working hard to make this possible. Thank you. Um, several years ago, we invited the Flood Control District to come to the Transportation and Infrastructure Planning Subcommittee. Um, there was some concern about how the monies are spent. Um, as we all know, the City of Phoenix provides a significant amount to the Flood Control District, actually the most. And um, we wanted to make sure we had a good partnership with the Flood Control District for projects like this. And so I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to the Board of Supervisors because they heard us loud and clear and they made sure that the City of Phoenix gets their fair share. So credit to our Board of Supervisors. It's good to have a partner in Maricopa County. Well said. Roll call. Galindo Elvira? Yes. Guardado? Yes. Hodge Washington? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Waring? Yes. Stark? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-0. Item 52 is to apply for the bridge investment grant opportunity. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? I move to approve item 52. Second. Motion and a second. This is another opportunity to take advantage of the bipartisan infrastructure law, this time through the U.S. Department of Transportation's bridge investment program. This item, if successful, would reconstruct the Grand Canal Bridge across the Salt River Project Grand Canal. This bridge was originally constructed in 1927 and is the bridge of the highest need of replacement within the city of Phoenix. In addition to the bridge, we see the infrastructure signals, bicycle and pedestrian crossings of Van Buren Street and 40th Street located atop the Grand Canal bridge deck. Uh, we've had great partnerships with the federal government along the Grand Canal, including receiving a very successful grant in 2015 a Tiger Grant to upgrade the pedestrian pathways, better lighting, much more investment in safety and uh, just quality transportation corridor, particularly for people who walk or bicycle. And we wanna continue the partnership. At last count, we have received 120 million in bipartisan infrastructure law funding. That's over two dozen different projects, including 60 million in transportation, roads, public transit, airport, and then another 60 million announced for clean water. So it's a great partnership and, and will really make a difference for the people of Phoenix. Any additional comments? Roll call. Galindo Elvira? Yes. Guardado? Yes. Hodge Washington? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Waring? Yes. Stark? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-0. The good news continues with item 66, which is our general plan. And I'll invite our team to come forward. They have been working so hard on this. Many cities hire a large team of consultants to do the general plan, which is our 10-year strategic plan focused on land use. Uh, but we did not do that here in the city of Phoenix. So Josh Bednarik and his team put in long hours to get us here today. Uh, special thanks to 
Tricia and Joelle and the entire planning and development department, as well as the amazing 16 member Phoenix 2025 Leadership Committee, led by our three-time chairman, most time. That is a true servant to the city of Phoenix, so thank you for stepping up yet again. Chairman Stein, you have assisted many mayors and city councils and has really connected the plans across the decades. I was proud to serve as vice chair the last time we updated the general plan to Chairman Stein 10 years ago, so... Uh, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we also had committee members who joined us midstream and didn't miss a beat. And we just want to thank them for the really important work they did. This is a plan that puts equity at the forefront, that looks at how ch technology is changing, looks at the important link between water and land use, and really says we are a diverse city that we want to celebrate unique neighborhoods throughout and multiple village cores. It was approved by all 15 village planning communities, village planning committees, and the cumulative vote was 147 to 4 to 1 in favor. So very impressive numbers. Um, could those of us, everyone who is here who um, was involved with the plan, if you could just raise your hand, including our great commissioners who are here, so we can say thank you. And now we will turn to our team to provide a staff report. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, great introduction <laughs> to our efforts. Um, as we said, with me today is Joelle Carrasco, who has co-led this project, and our leadership committee chairman, uh, Mr. Mo Stein. And we are here to present the 2025 general plan update. So for the past 15 months, we have worked with the mayor and council, leadership committee, village planning committees, the community at large, and city staff to bring forth an update to the general plan that reflects the community's vision of a more connected Phoenix. As you know, state law requires that the general plan is updated every 10 years. But more importantly, we made a commitment to keep the conversation going with the community and to keep the general plan relevant. As the primary source of land use growth and preservation policies for the city, the general plan provides a purposeful and strategic alignment with our variety of city and community-driven policies, plans, and initiatives. And Mayor and Council, thank you again. And uh, just to highlight again, we did receive unanimous approval by our villages. Some of the numbers are there on the screen for you. Uh, so we are very grateful and thankful for all of their volunteer time and uh, to ensure that this plan is really representing all corners of our communities in our city. And then shortly after that, uh, we went to Planning Commission, received another recommendation for approval, uh, a unanimous recommendation with several revisions, which I wanted to highlight in a couple of slides. Um, and they were in dir direct response to the VPC comments and directions that we received, and as well as responding to some of the 60-day review drafts. So as, as was mentioned by the mayor, uh, planning equity is one of the, the most significant changes with this update. And we took the opportunity after the Planning Commission recommendation for approval to um, more clearly express how understanding planning equity is a critical foundation to more equitable outcomes. And so that is one of the changes that you will see um, since the Planning Commission recommendation. In, to continue with that, uh, we also updated one particular section in the plan that talks about downtown as our core. And we integrated one new policy statement on that page as well, again, um, to ensure that equitable entrepreneurship opportunities are part of the future growth of our downtown and around our downtown. And then just a couple more updates here. Uh, we worked very closely with our aviation department and we had a few additional policies really to ensure their strong alignment with the aviation department's master plans and goals that uh, we wanted to incorporate in this draft before it came to you for your vote. 
And so there's one there on the screen for you. And then the next slide as well. And then lastly, uh, another minor update uh, in the memo that you received is the addition of ecotourism as a definition in our glossary. As part of the 60-day review draft, we did get some comments about ecotourism and integrated those. And we just wanted to make sure that we included that term in our glossary with this final draft. And so now I'm going to pass it over to our Plant Phoenix committee chairman, Mo Stein, so he can continue to tell this great story that, that we're telling with this uh, latest draft of the, of the general plan. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Council. What a great honor it is for us to be here with you today. It was. Well, it seems like it was only about a year and 50, a year and three months ago that we were here starting this process because it actually was a year and three months ago. Um, normally, I can tell you that it takes two to three, sometimes four years to do a general plan. Councilwoman Matt Pastor will know that process as very well. But this year we had a little bit less, and we had a little bit less because we were purposeful and decisive, and we have benefited from great leadership in the, from the elected podium and from our staff. And we cannot be more thankful for the work that Josh did. You know, Josh was our, our planning lead 10 years ago, and now Trish and Joelle have done yeoman's work, not only doing their day jobs, but doing a little extra job while we're at it. It really makes a difference. We're really proud of this work. Uh, because you asked us to be specific, you asked us to be strategic, you asked us to really look at what has changed in our city and what continues to change. Our plan is not just a code of documents and what you shall do, it is a real look at strategy, especially for land use strategy and how land use affects our lives in Phoenix. Um, that is a unique aspect. One of the things we did, and Mayor, you'll remember this, we looked at general plans from all over the United States. It was very difficult to find general plans that were strategic. We could find land use calculations and land use maps, but finding strategy was a little bit more difficult. And that's what we set out to do, was to create that strategy and to tell that story very clearly. One of the things we found out and we continue to believe is that people really believe in the story of the city. The story of where we've been, where we are, and where we intend to go is, is, is really quite important. And we tell that story in our general plan. In doing so, we changed the way planning conversations occur in Phoenix. We did that by creating the strategic, we call it the pyramid, but this time we've continued our pyramid, making just a few tweaks that I think are really important. We re-emphasized, double down if you would, on the idea that this is a connected city and people want to be part of a connected city. That's not just transportation, that's about all things. It's about ideas, it's about people, it's about opportunity, and it's about the challenges we all face together as one community. Our three community benefits are, are extraordinarily important, prosperity, health and wellness or well-being and the environment but we did something that i think was very bold and most cities don't have the opportunity to do which is we apply the lens of equity to planning and we found out that how that important that was to our citizens of all walks equity and planning is just is something that you take for granted and we're not taking it for granted our plan is based on the fundamental of how equitable planning is important to everybody in this city our five core values are extraordinarily important as well this year we changed one, and we had quite a debate in our committee meetings, should we change them at all, or should we go less? The one we changed said to create an even more vibrant downtown. That's still really important to create an even more vibrant downtown, and we continue to do a really great job, and there are challenges with downtown that we have to do. But it's hard to say that that is the strategic goal, and one of the things that came up was a very clear message from our village members, that it's time to really dive back into our village model maintain the model, but to encourage a real dialogue about what's happening in our, in our villages. As it turns out, not everything is the way we thought it would be. Some things are much better. Some things aren't working the same way. Some things, maybe the core isn't even the core. So by doing that, it allowed us to really examine downtown and say, downtown is not a place with a core. Downtown is the core. It's not only the core of our city, it's the heart of Arizona. And I think that that's a statement that's extraordinarily important in our general plan and why that works. And we've replaced that strategy with the idea that we can create a network of cores, centers, and corridors. It allows our villages for the first time in many years to really focus in on what planning is about and to really think through their core plans and their village plans in a way that we haven't had a chance to do before. Our staff is totally excited. I can tell you, Joel told me, he won't tell you, I'll tell you, that we're already getting phone calls from village planners and from village leaders asking us when can we start that process. I think that's an extraordinary benefit. And lastly, our five, our seven strategic tools, we emphasize one, which is I plan Phoenix. The idea that everybody has an opportunity to participate in planning in our community, and we encourage it. 
feedback is essential. Our plan is not just an isolated plan, but it works with many community voices. There are two things that I think are really important. First, that our plan speaks to all sides of 360 degrees of any presentation. And I think you as, from the podium have seen that in presentations where both a proponent and perhaps a, a, an opponent will use the general plan to support their, their case and their presentation. We think that's extraordinarily important. And the other part is how important it is to recognize this is just the general plan. There are hundreds of other plans in the city. There are village plans, core plans, overlays, downtown plan, housing plan, other kinds of plans. We attempt to make some sense of order to that and how that all, all ties together, which is something that we started last time and we've been fortunate to be able to continue that process really well. One of the things that often happens in plans like this is that we, we spend a lot of time saying what you cannot do. You cannot be this close to the street, you cannot be this high, you cannot be this way. We take a little bit more optimistic look and say, here's what we want you to do. We encourage these kinds of outcomes in Phoenix because they're good for everybody. And by good planning brings great people and great ideas together. As we say, if you connect people and place, you get really great ideas. And we think that's what that speaks to. Rather than to limit our opportunity and our innovation and our optimism, we encourage it. By doing that, we simply don't take a whole lot of time on the land use map. Fortunately, there's a process to change the land use map, but I can assure you that had we attempted to change the land use map, we would have a thousand land map amendments and we would be here for the rest of our lives. There's still a really good process. We encourage that to happen. We think our plan will encourage people to take a look at the plan and be purposeful about their recommendations. Next, of course, that this is a living model, and Joel talked about that. This is not something that sits on the shelf for 10 years, just like it has happened in other cities, but we report to you every year on our work, and we may even be bold and say what other cities do, which is to do a five-year update, where they dive into one specific item and do an update just on one item and a mid-course mid move, and maybe that's something that we could think about as we move forward. And then lastly, it was really important that, uh, Mayor, I really appreciate your comments about what's, what's happened in, in our work, but uh, this is us. Uh, we had no paid consultants, we had no editors, we had no graphic artists, we had no writers, we had no photographers. We have us, uh, and we're really proud of the fact, and I think it makes it even better, and I think it makes it more important to the community members who supported us and came out to thousands of email comments online, the cards that you saw, the little postcards that we had that people could write in and, and leave their messages, the public meetings we had are all across the city that many of you p participated in, and then our village meetings, not one, but three village meetings with each village so that they knew that they were part of this planning process. We're really excited to bring it to you today and really appreciate your support. And with that, Mayor and Council staff recommends approval per the April 8, 2024 memo from the Planning and Development Director and adoption of the related re resolution. Thank you so much. Thanks for the great work. Before we open the planning here, the public hearing, any comments? The Vice Mayor and then Council Member Calendal Elvira. Um, first off, Mo, you should be a part of the Phoenix Planning and Development Department. You have done so much for that department. You have been such a great voice uh, for planning, and I, I really admire you and thank you again for doing this another time <laughs> you've always been there for us you know i was um, a member of the governor's over uh, growing smarter oversight council when they were talking about all the updated legislation including taking general plans to the voters and that was quite controversial at the time but i think it was important because it really made us as planners make sure that the public was involved in the process. And certainly your presentation today shows that you got to every part of our city and made sure everyone had a voice in the process. And so I really thank you. Um, as a planner, I'm proud of the planning department. <laughs> so you know I'm gonna support it. Thank you. Well said, uh, Council Member Galindo Elvira. Thank you, Mayor. Last week, I had the benefit of a briefing by staff to bring me up to speed on the general plan. And what I thought last week, I still think today, it's thoughtful, it's smart, and it's forward thinking. And an important aspect, at least for me and for District 7, is that it reflects the community and its diversity. So thank you for doing that. Very much appreciated. 
Thank you so much. We will open the public hearing. We have three individuals who are very involved with the plan available to speak if necessary. Uh, Devney, Gabe, and Krista, would any of you like to come forward and speak about the great work you have done? Wonderful, we appreciate you being here. Any questions for the folks, including our commissioners? All right, close the public hearing, and I'll turn to the councilwoman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I echo my colleague's sentiments. I know this was a labor of love, and I thank you guys for putting all the effort into this. Um, it's a great step in identifying what we want our city to look like. Um, I, for, I just want to ask a couple of questions to help. Um, some of my villages had some concerns. I just want to make sure that those concerns were, were um, either addressed or we have a plan going forward for those. So if I could take a few minutes and indulge me by asking a couple of questions. Um, for example, um, I'm going to start off with South Mountain. South Mountain had some questions about the implementation campaign and the next steps. Could you give us some answers or what the thought process would be for the implementation or campaign on next steps for this? Certainly, um, Mayor, Councilwoman Hodge Washington, members of the council. Um, Certainly, if, if the council is inclined to approve the general plan, uh, and we will be back um, in May to refer it to the ballot, and should the voters, the Phoenix, um, support the approval, we will be working with our village planning committees, um, and Joelle and I are prepared to start that process this summer to start that conversation of developing a work program um, with our village planning committees um, to talk about um, our place types, the land use, uh, uh, the land use map, which I know is a is a major um, item that has come up, and to work through that program of 2025 so that we can move forward with some updates to the overall land use map and develop place types for throughout the city. And I know I'm asking you to, to kind of do a little crystal ball here, but I'm just trying to address the concerns that were raised here, so thank you for that. Um, the other question was presented from the Levine Village that talked about some of the... Um, the metric, sorry, I have here some of the metrics that they wanted to see included in the general plan. They included specific measurable, achievable, time-bound metrics for the goal, such as identifying corridors and exploring and establishing funding for infrastructure. Um, do you have any comments on that rec recommendation? Certainly, Mayor, uh, Councilwoman Hodge Washington, members of the council. I think that would also be a part of that work program with the villages so that each village um, could have input on how they want some of those things measured and what is important uh, to them as part of that work program. My last one is a question from my central city village, which talked about requesting annual updates on the progress of these initiatives as part of the village process. Anything you would like to add on that? Uh, certainly, Mayor, Councilwoman Hodge Washington, members of the council, um, it is our uh, approach to go and do um, annual updates or through our annual reports of what the status um, of those efforts are to our villages. Thank you so much. I just felt the need because they, they'd have a little, um, they weren't an outright approval. They had approvals and recommendations. I wanted to make sure they knew I read it and I understood it, and I wanted to make sure they had an answer as well. So thank you so much again for your time and for all of the hard work that went into the general plan. I truly appreciate it. Councilwoman Pastor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mo, you mentioned the villages, and uh, I think it's a great topic. <laughs> to talk about right now since there is language at the legislation uh, at the legislature to uh, really remove the villages and the process uh, or Joelle whoever from the team why do you consider the villages important to be part of the general plan well mayor councilwoman thank you for the question uh, Villages, and villages have been part of our city for since I was in college, and I got to serve on the Urban Land Use Planning Committee way back when. Uh, the villages provide so many opportunities to connect people in place, which is part of our plan. It's hard. Not everybody under can be down here at a city council meeting, and frankly, I don't think the city council travels to a whole lot other than budget time to, to have different meetings in the community. But the villages are made up of neighbors. And I think that neighbor to neighbor is where really planning conversations can occur. And I think it's so important that we maintain those kinds of conversations. And the mayor and council have been very efficient 
in providing a mix of, of people from all walks, home, homeowners, business people, civic leaders, people who've never been involved in community work before. That conversation is occurring on weeknights, after dinner or before dinner, sometimes on weekends, sometimes in people's yards. And I don't think that it can be replaced by a legislation. And, and I don't want to sp speak to the politics of what the legislature may do. But I think it would be short-sighted to think that we, who are pioneers in the idea of bringing planning to the community, would be welcome the idea of bringing it away from the community. In fact, our plan in iPlan Phoenix, which is one of our tools, says we want that occur to occur. We want that regular review. We want to be held accountable. A good strategic plan, as you know, not just sets out the goals, but it sets out the accountability of what we tend to do about it. And we intend to be able to hold this committee together. One of the great things that happened with Plan Phoenix the last time around is we continued to have regular meetings with Josh about what we were doing and how we were doing it and were we, were we purposeful? Did we hit the targets or are we hitting the targets? Did we miss something? And those are conversations that I think can continue to occur. And I think that you all can be part of those conversations and should be part of those conversations so that we're doing what Councilwoman Hodge Washington is saying, which is to be accountable and to be representative and to report back on a regular basis that mechanism which allows us to do that. I can't imagine a more proud opportunity we have for people in our city to be part of that process. Eloquently said, um, I think the villages represent everyone within our city and the community, and it's very diverse. Uh, one of the things that as a former village member of Encanto was really learning my diverse voices within the area of the historic neighborhoods and the different needs and wants uh, with the different areas because it is diverse throughout District 4 and it's specifically the Encanto Village uh, representing the central core but also going further east to 16th Street which is very different and then going further west to uh, the freeway and it's it's completely different on what you want to put there so uh, I think the villages are important I think one of our responsibilities as an elected is to really make sure our villages have diverse diverse voices and also diverse thinking and so I have tried really, really super hard <laughs> to make sure that is happening from advocate, uh, advocates for affordability to advocates for, with height to infill, um, you name it, I've been trying to diversity. Some of them haven't been, been male dominance on some of my villages, so I've had to go back out and, and seek women willing to sit on the village. Um, and so for me, it's about the represent, our villages represent the representation of our diversity and being really cognizant as we sit here selecting people to sit on those committees. So uh, thank you for that because I needed to hear some validation of that we're doing a good job and that it's represented within the general plan. So thank you for everything. Thank you so much for all of the hard work. I believe we are ready for uh, a motion. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the item for the April 8, 2024 memo from the Planning and Development Director and adopt the related resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second and then a, a, a double second from Councilwoman Pastor. Roll call. Galindo Elvira. Yes. Guardado? Yes. Hodge Washington? Yes. O'Brien? Mayor, may I explain my vote? Please do. I will be supporting this, but I do want to say thank you so much to Chairman Stein and all the commissioners and all the hard work put on by the department, um, especially given the fact that normally cities go out um, to a consultant and you all did this as well as your daytime jobs. So much appreciated. And with that, I vote aye. Pastor? I'll explain my vote. I just want to say we have some awesome employees along with constituents and citizens that are willing to put in their time and effort uh, to write and listen, really listen, and, uh, and then be able to write a general plan 
in a strategic way to hear and incorporate all the voices. So great appreciation, yes. Waring? Yes. Stark? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-0. Adding to the already impressive tally of votes in favor of the plan. Congratulations to the, thank you, whole team. Thank you everyone for the hard work to get us here today. We will now go to our final portion of the meeting, citizen public comment, and I will turn to our city attorney to introduce this portion. Thank you, Mayor. During citizen comment, members of the public may address the city council for up to three minutes on issues of interest or concern to them. The citizen comment session is limited to 30 minutes. The Arizona Open Meeting Law permits the city council to listen to the comments, but prohibits council members from discussing or acting on the matters presented. Thank you so much. We will begin with a virtual comment from Julia. Julia will be followed by in-person Nick. Julia, can you hear us? Julia, the floor is yours. All right, I do not hear Julia, so we will go on to Nick, followed by David in person. Is Nick Ethier here? All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. Uh, my name is Nick Ethier, a member of Unite Here Local, uh, Local 11. I was formerly a member, or formerly a cook for SSP America at Sky Harbor Airport. Uh, we believe that our employer, SSP America, is punishing workers in a discriminatory way for their union involvement. So far, at least nine union activists have been fired from SSP America since we first went on strike, and uh, I myself was recently fired. If SSP believes they can intimidate us by uh, targeting our most vocal leaders, they're in for a surprise. It will not be working. Um, even though I have been fired from SSP, we will not be silenced, and I will keep fighting with my coworkers. But we are here today because SSP America is your contractor and they are your responsibility. Uh, do you think that all our allegations of racial disparities mean nothing? We are asking you to investigate these issues, not just blindly take their side. Um, it's time that the city of Phoenix takes its responsibility seriously and for the city to investigate these allegations of racial disparities. And it's time the city really asks uh, themselves if SSP America is the type of company that's best for the job. Thank you. David is next, followed by Isabella. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. My name is David Bonilla and I'm a cashier for SSP America at Sky Harbor. I am currently on a leave of absence to work as an organizer with Unite Here Local 11. So far, at least nine union activists have been fired from SSP America since they first went on strike. If SSP thinks that they'll scare us by singling out the most outspoken leaders, they're in for a rude awakening. Those tactics won't work. Workers will not be silenced, but we are here today because SSP, I mean, because Sky Harbor is your airport, SSP America is your contractor, and, inve and investigating these allegations is your responsibility. Do you believe that these allegations of racial disparities hold no weight? We urge you to conduct a thorough investigation into these matters rather than simply doing nothing. Investigate SSP America, and these allegations of racial disparity, it's time you get to the bottom of what is happening with SSP America and ask if they are the, if they are right, if they are the right fit for the job. Thank you. Isabella is next, followed by Chaska. 
Good morning, Mayor and Council. I am Isabella. I work as a line cook at the tavern in Sky Harbor Airport. We have been raising our concerns about unfair treatment by an employer, SSP America, including allegations of racial disparities in hiring and pay practices. Workers have filed several unfair labor practice charges against the city's sub subcontractor. SSP America alleging that the company has violated labor laws. In recent, nine in recent months, nine vocal union act activists have been fired, including Jasmine Glass, who spoke out and was a whistleblower in the complaints filed with the city of Phoenix. SSP is your contractor, they're your responsibility. Do you think that all the allegations of racial disparities mean nothing? We're asking for a fair investigation, not for you to blindly let's take our side. We ask time and time again, investigate SSP America and these allegations of racial disparity with your contractor. It's time for you to get to the bottom of what, of what is happening with SSP America. And they ask, and ask if they are the right fit for the job. Chaska is next, followed by Eric Nielsen. Hello, Mayor and City Council. My name is Chaska Kogashal. I work for SSP America as a barista at Sky Harbor Airport. Workers have filed several unfair labor practice charges against the city's subcontractor, SSP America, alleging that the company violated labor laws. In recent months, nine of my fellow co-workers, including Jasmine Glass and Nick Ethier, were fired for being vocal union activists. This all happened after we first went on strike and only continued. SSP America is your contractor and they're your responsibility. Uh, do you think that all of our allegations of racial disparity mean nothing? We are asking you to investigate these issues, not just blindly take our side. It's time that the city of Phoenix takes responsibility seriously and uh, investigates SSP America and the allegations and really consider if this company, SSP America, is the right for the job, the right one for the job. Eric is next, followed by Matthew. Uh, hello, my name is Eric. Um, I want to, uh, before I get to what I came to say, I want to start by saying um, the Stein guy was really impressive. That guy was cool. I, uh, talk about speaking softly but carrying a big stick. Um, but what I came here to speak about today is something that seems to really be affecting City of Phoenix employees. Um, and I saw, I saw an article on AZ Central about they fired this lady, um, kind of the same thing these people were talking about uh, in terms of they fired a lady who was like a janitor on the mayor's office. And I saw, I've never seen City of Phoenix employees swearing all over Twitter like that before. So when I come here today, I don't come here just to harp on what's wrong. I come here offering a possible solution to Jeff Barton's office, which to me would, um, I, well, first of all, City of Phoenix are not re really responsible legally or financially for what goes on with their contractors. That's why they contract out in the first place. Um, that's, what, that's the issue of the problem. So I think the, the, mayor, uh, the mayor's office and the J Jeff Barton's office should work to identify maybe city employees who are contractors and have worked long enough for the city, then they should be automatically onboarded onto the city, because Maria's story may may not strike home to a lot of people. But and I, I hope no one hope I hope no one thinks I'm being melodramatic here. But when it comes to Maria's story, I'm immediately reminded of a man who stored down Hitler himself and won a gold medal. Y'all named the street after him. His name was Jesse Owens. And you know what he did when he got back to Alabama? He was also a effing janitor. So I just want to leave y'all with that thought. And finally, lastly, I, if anyone's watching this on Phoenix 11, please vote Democrat. I just want to add that a vote for the MAGA agenda is a vote for World War III and nuclear or not nuclear. That equals at least a million coffins coming home. And lastly, I'm 33, so y'all want to get down with fascism? Go ahead and do it, because it's going to be your children, not me. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Matthew is next, followed by Michael. Um, 
Hello, Mayor and uh, Council. My name is Matthew Crocker. I am currently an employee for SSP America at the Sky Harbor Airport. I work as a line cook. Um, we have been raising our concerns about unfair treatment by our employer, SSP America, uh, including allegations of racial disparities in hiring and pay practices. Workers have filed several unfair labor practice charges against the city's subcontractor, SSP, alleging that the company has violated labor laws. In recent months, nine vocal union activists have been fired, including Jasmine Ga Glass and Nick, uh, who spoke out and was a whistleblower in the complaints filed with the city of Phoenix. SSP America is your contractor. They are your responsibility. Do you think that our allegations of racial disparities mean nothing? Uh, we're asking for a fair investigation, not for you just to blindly believe them. We have asked you time and time again, investigate SSP America and these allegations of racial disparity with your contractor. It's time you get to the bottom of this of what is happening with SSP and ask if they are the right fit for the job. Michael is next, followed by Greg. Hello, Mayor, City Council. My name is Michael Smith. I am a utility at Humble Pie for SSP America. So far, at least nine union activists have been fired from SSP America since they first went on strike. SSP think they can scare us by picking out the loudest leaders, but they're in for a rude awakening. Workers will not be silent. When will it be enough for this council to take what is happening at your airport seriously? Do you think that all the allegations and racial disparities mean nothing? We are asking you to investigate these issues, not just blindly take our side. Time and again, we will ask you to investigate these allegations of racial disparities with your contract the SSP America. The city of, Phoenix, city of Phoenix needs to step up, take this responsibility serious, and determine if SSP America is truly the fit for the job. Thank you. Greg is next. Mayor and Council, uh, my name is Greg Depker. Um, on and off for the last five and a half years, I've spent in homelessness here in Phoenix. Um, my original home was California. I was born and raised there, but I consider Phoenix and Washington, D.C. home. Um, this article is actually from the Wall Street Journal this past Thursday. In the last five years, California has spent $24 billion on homelessness. Well, that $24 billion just got audited. The article is actually the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal. And the heading of it is California's Homeless Folly. In that audit of that 24 billion, the auditor found only two, two environments that were actually fiscally sound and actually had, and get this, not even a good but a moderate effect on the homeless environment. I've been sitting on this proposal for five years, between the pandemic and everything else, but for the last two, I've been knocking on the door of Phoenix with a proposal to help with the situation. Well, now instead of knocking, I'm doing the camera, the ring camera, and coming here. I have a proposal. I'm currently dealing, um, working with uh, San Francisco, um, because quite frankly, what's being done isn't working. I know intimately the homeless environment here in Phoenix. I know the people who work with the homeless, and I am on the street dealing with the people, so I know exactly what's going on. You're doing the exact same thing California's doing. There's nothing you're doing they haven't done, and you're going down the exact same road. You're just doing it on a smaller scale. If California was an independent state with its 39 million people, it would be the fifth largest economy on the planet. 
You're just doing it on a smaller scale. And not only that, the auditor gave even the numbers of the growth of the homeless. Hence why <laughs> Governor Newsom is pulling his hair out, and I recommend he doesn't because when I was his age, I still had a full head of hair. So, <laughs> But anyway, I just want to leave you with this. Nobody even wants to look at it. They want to avoid it. Unless you start looking at it and really look at it, nothing's going to change. Thank you. Ms. Taggart will be our final speaker. Oh, hi. Uh, I wish I could be there in person with you guys, but uh, I have a very busy week with doing the Wallace and Ladmo exhibit at the Sunny Soap Historical Society and planning a panel now. Um, so, but I just wanted to thank you for all you're doing for the city of Phoenix. Um, and thank you for coming to Slope Fest uh, this past weekend, Deborah Stark and Mayor Kay Gallo. Um, It was a great event and it was so much fun for everybody and coming to see our booth and learning more about what we're doing in Sunny Slope. Um, and I hope you guys can make it next year and I'm sure it will be even bigger next year. So I just wanted to make that public comment thanking you guys. I know you're very busy, but you took the time to come out and support us and that meant the world. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. We are adjourned. And uh, but there was also Mexicans crossing, looking to make a living. Early Phoenix was half the population was Mexican, Mexican American, and there was also soldiers of fortune here, uh, 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 veterans from the war, the Civil War. Uh, so you had a, a conglomeration of a lot of different types of people, a lot of uh, Euro some Europeans also.